Well, how would you guys like it if the Lord just poured out a whole bunch of money on you guys every day? Let's say he gave you 1440 bucks every day. What would you guys think about that? What would you do with it? The, <laughs> yeah, the Lord gives it to you. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I suspect we'd all probably say, you know what, I'm going to invest that. Uh, if the Lord's giving it to me, you know, we know the parable of the talents, for example. He, he's giving it to you because he expects a return on it. He wants something from you. Uh, he's not going to want you to bury it uh, and come back at the end and say, I want my 1440 for every day that I gave you that money. You know, he's going to want a return on his investment. God's very clear about that in Scripture. He expects a return. Um, how many do you think that you'd be saying, ah, you know, it's the Lord's money. It's, it's not all that important. I'll go ahead and, you know, toss a little bit of it. Everyone's heard that expression that time is money, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I thought about that. I was going to use that, and I thought, well, is that worldly or is that a biblical thing? And I realized that uh, it really is a biblical concept, that parable of the talents. Uh, the master says you should have at least put it in the bank so I would have drawn interest so that when I return, I could collect my money back with interest. So uh, that time does equate to money rather than burying it where the time is worthless. You know, So I believe that uh, time is money and therefore the context of my message today. Um, and none of us would probably want to you know, take that and, and put it down the drain. So here's what the Lord put on my heart today is to talk about our time. Uh, our time is very, very valuable. It is probably the most precious gift that there is because even the richest person on the planet, I don't care who you are, you can't buy any more time. It is a gift from God. It cannot ever be reclaimed or taken back. Um, what you have is what you have and how we use it is how we use it. And when that minute that moment, that hour, that day, that week is spent. It is gone for all eternity. You will never get it back. And the interesting thing is that we will all be held accountable one day for every single thing. You know, the word says that we'll be held accountable for every idle word. D- just words that we say um, that doesn't even mean it's a bad thing. Just an idle word, and a word that doesn't build up, that doesn't edify, that doesn't exhort people, that doesn't build the kingdom. Those are idle words, things that we speak that don't bear fruit. God says we'll be held accountable. So if we're going to be held accountable just for the idle words that we speak, how much more will he hold us accountable for the idle time that we, I guess we can call it investing or wasting, uh, which is what this picture is right here. So I gave everyone a pad and a pen. The purpose of these pads and pens is not for you to write down what I say. It is for you to write down what you're hearing the Lord speak to today. And I believe if you've come here wanting to hear a word from the Lord today, you will indeed hear. But will you be brave enough to write down what he puts on your heart? And that's going to be a hard thing, and I'm not kidding. Because we're going to talk about how we spend our time, uh, how God sees our time, how he values our time, and what we're supposed to be doing in our lives knowing that one day we're going to be accountable for every single minute of our lives that we've we've had whatever's happened from this point forward or from this point backward we can't we can't do anything about it but god is constantly calling each and every one of us higher and higher and higher and today i'm going to tell you if your heart is in a good place and you're saying you know what i'm submitted and surrendered to you lord i believe he'll speak some things to you that should be life-changing today as we go through this this time together, he's going to put things in your heart, uh, specifically things that you're engaging in, activities that you're engaging in. It could be once a week, once a month, once a year, you know, once once an hour, whatever, that he's going to speak to you. It isn't going to come from me. It's going to come from him that you need to say, am I truly investing my time wisely in the kingdom of God, knowing I'm going to stand before him and be accountable for that? Is this activity that I'm engaged in kingdom building? Is it edifying? Is it glorifying? And if we can't place it as a kingdom building activity, uh, we need to take that back to the Lord and say, Lord, is this really from you or is this really from me? We've all come out of the world, every single one of us. And I think we all recognize, even from the story of the Israelites coming out of Egypt, you can take the Egypt or the Israelites out of Egypt, but you can't get Egypt out of the Israelites, and we're we're no different. You know, we've been on a journey ever since we've we've come out of our Egypts. 
that we're constantly finding things within us that are remnants and residual of our life in Egypt. And every activity is not a bad or what we would consider an evil one. It's easy to look at the, you know, adultery or fornication or stealing. It's easy to find some things as, I got to get that out of my life. You know, let's cut these things out. But how many things are still left within us that are not building the kingdom of God, that are not going to be glorifying to Yeshua? And they aren't now and they will never be. He wants more from us. You know, he asked, or the expectation is he wants to see fruit in every season of our life, in and out of season, we're to be bearing fruit. So today is a grand pruning process led by the Holy Spirit. Because I'm not going to ask to see your list. I, I, I don't care what's on your list. That's between you and the Lord. But you need to be honest with yourself. And you may think right off the bat, oh, the Lord's putting something in my heart. Well, that's that can't be from the Lord. I'm not going to write it down because the underlying motivation is I'm not going to give that up. I'm going to be unwilling, you know, I'm unwilling. And we won't say that <laughs> consciously. But deep in your heart of hearts, we know I don't want to give that up. It, it means everything to me, or it means a lot to me, which is kind of tantamount to idolatry. So I'm just going to ask you to be honest with yourself and with the Holy Spirit to write down the things that it puts on your heart. Uh, it could be starting right here, right now, this minute. It could be towards the end. It could be at any point. But again, I'm not going to look at the list. I'm not interested what's on your list. I'm interested in trying to convey the word that God put on my heart to share with you today so that each and every one of us will be motivated to really assess the lives that we're living, the things that we're doing, the things that we're not doing that are truly a waste of our time, of God's time. And in the end, I think we should all know this, anything that we're doing that is not kingdom building, that is not glorifying to God, will never truly satisfy in our hearts. You know, it will never meet the needs that we think. And that's the delusion of Satan. We have so many activities that we think, oh, this is relaxing, this is resting, you know. And I'm gonna do my very best not to mention anything because it could appear that I'm saying this particular thing is evil. And I don't wanna do that. But it's easy to justify so many things as saying, man, I can build the kingdom of God through this thing right here. Um, and it's very true. But if you're engaged in it to an extent that it's all about you, and, and you, you know that by the, by the Holy Spirit, you can know. And I'm gonna, I'll pick out one thing because I'm not engaged in it, and I don't think many people here are to the wrong extent. Of course, I wouldn't know because I'm not engaged in it. But it's an example I heard just last night, social media. Social media can be used to bring the gospel to the four corners of the globe like like no way we've ever had in the past. And at the same time, social media can consume your lives. You can be so engrossed in it, immersed in it, and involved in it uh, that you are utterly wasting your time. You're wasting other people's time reading the things that you're writing down. You know, I know <clears throat> I've talked to younger folks, like my daughter, you know, she, well, younger, she, she's 30-something now. But she would say, you know, people would send a, a text or a this or a that saying, you know, selfies of, hey, I'm having a McDonald's burger now. You know, it's like, well, that's great. You know, it's all about me. But, um, and that's kind of an extreme example. But the point is, as you're assessing examples that the Lord, are not examples, but the things that the Lord's putting on your heart, don't be quick to justify, well, that's good. I can build the kingdom of God with it. If the Lord has put it on your heart to write it down, write it down. Because later, we're actually going to go through, you know, not list item by item. You will, through the power of the Spirit, to determine Yes, this is totally of God. It's totally kingdom building. So you may scratch some of the things off. So in the, under the guise of brainstorming, which is where you write everything down, be very, very, very open to what the Spirit may be saying to you. Don't hesitate to write something down because if the Lord reveals to you, yes, this is totally of me, it's originated by and from me and I want you engaged in this uh, because it is a kingdom building activity, it's, and kingdom building, by the way, can be just anything, taking a nap, going to sleep, um, totally kingdom building because if you allow yourself to get sick and, and not able to function, how can you build the kingdom? You're a worthless, you know, you're, you're worthless in that ability. So, you know, I'm not talking about out on the streets, pounding the pavement or, or whatever, or always witnessing or whatever. There's many things that contribute to your ability to build the kingdom properly. Healthy diets, uh, the contrary would be not a healthy diet. You're actually taking away from your own ability to do that and, and how God can use you more fully. So the point is, be open to what the Spirit's saying, write it down, and later let the Spirit 
confirm to you, yeah, this is totally a waste of time. I need to either minimize it, uh, like social media, it can be used for the right thing. It needs to be minimized or some things need to be cut out altogether. Or maybe your purpose in social media has nothing to do with spreading the gospel and it needs to go if that was the case. you know. And I'm not, I'm not trying to put things in your minds or in your hearts because I want them to come from the Spirit. But I needed one example that would reflect something that can be totally God-glorifying and it can be totally not. So... With that said, Father, I just pray right now you'd begin to speak to each and every one of our hearts. Give us the courage to write down the things that you reveal to us, Father. May we not try to qualify it right off the bat. May we just write it down and trust that you will ultimately show us if that is originated from you, if it's originated above the line and originated from heaven, or if it's a residual thing that we have carried with us out of Egypt, or uh, it's something that is brought brought upon us uh, by friends, family, whatever, but it's it's a flesh originated activity. Uh, so Lord, just speak to us clearly, give us the ability to hear because we want to change. We want to be more and more like you. We want to be better tools in your tool belt. You are the head and we are the body. We want to be effective and efficient and powerful for you and for your glory. We bless you and praise you, Yeshua. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, the message I have today, I'm just calling it totally committed. Are you really all in? If you seek him in earnest and with a pure heart, I believe he will show you activities that hold you back, keep you from doing your best from him, activities that you justify because they think you help you uh, to be, reflect, to, to be refreshed, refreshed, to enjoy life, to chillax, uh, even things that you think, I'm building the kingdom with this. Um, but we in, we justify them as good, but they're virtually lifeless. Activities that in God's economy are cheap imitations and worldly leftovers of what he has that is best for us. So we're going to look down a few scriptures, write things down just as the Lord leads, and this is by no stretch uh, trying to be comprehensive, but just a few things that the Lord might use to convict your spirits on, on what he thinks about uh, our role in the kingdom of God. First one is Colossians 3, 1 through 3, which says, Therefore, if you've been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That alone, you know, it says an awful lot about what we're supposed to be thinking of is your activity, you know, the one that you might be pondering right now. Uh, the one that the Lord might be bringing to your mind. Is that something that, that God is doing? He's seated on the throne. Is it something that he is doing right now? Is it something he would do? Is it something he did on this earth while he was here? Is it a heavenly activity or is it from the earth? And again, I'll use examples like sleeping. We know they don't sleep in heaven because of a glorified body. Uh, so every activity that isn't in heaven isn't necessarily shouldn't be on earth because we still have human bodies that need to be taken care of. But outside of that, the Spirit can convict you and show you what is a heavenly activity and what is simply something that we enjoy doing or are doing. Next one is Romans 8, 5 through 8. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mindset on the flesh is hostile towards God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. And I mentioned earlier that we have a lot of imitation activities, and I've found a bunch, even in preparing for this message, that feel that I can justify as, man, that's refreshing, it's relaxing. I just, oh, I need to get in my chair and do this activity, you know? But I know in the end, it truly doesn't satisfy. It truly, truly doesn't. It's a cheap imitation that Satan has sold to me, you know, in some of my activities. And I justify doing it because I think that, but I know in the end it doesn't. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. 
we're kind of at the the close of the Olympics or the end. I, don't, I haven't even been watching them. You know, it's not something the Lord's put on my heart to do or I've had the time to do. But take that as an analogy. You know, this is what Paul's was. Paul talks about running the race, and wouldn't be surprised if being in Rome, you know, this actually was the Olympics. You know, who knows? But honestly, just just ask yourself this question: If you've watched the Olympics before, and I think we've all watched races and whatever activities in the Olympics, when that gun goes off, what do you think is going through the mind of the person who's running that race? Do you think they have any distractions whatsoever? Is there anything that they're engaged in? Um, <laughs> anything. And I, I'm not trying to put this on you because it's for me. Paul's analogy is we're supposed to look at our lives as if we are running a race. And do you think they're thinking, man, I hope I get that bronze today. Whew. I hope I place. I hope I just, you know, I hope I just finish the race. I hope I make it across the finish line. I can guarantee you not one of them is thinking, I hope I make it across the finish line today. Every single one, I hope, and I believe, has got one thing in mind, them standing on the tallest podium receiving the gold. That's what we're supposed to run for. Their minds are not distracted in any way, shape, or form by anything. They have one sole vision, one sole focus. That's the goal. Win the gold. That's what Paul says our lives are supposed to be like. Everything that we do, everything that we're engaged in should be with that single focus in mind. I talked uh, probably several months ago about Eliezer. He's an awesome example, and all of our servants are awesome examples. But taking Eliezer again as an example of a servant, he comes out, he prays at the well before his prayer is even finished. Rebecca comes out, determines that she's the bride, goes back. And, and I want you to just think of his single foc- focusness compared to this runner. He says, I'm not even going to eat dinner until I have an answer from you. I will not even sit down because I'm all about the Father's business. I'm not going to get distracted. I'm hungry. I've been on a long journey. I'm dying to sit down. I'm dying to eat. But I'm not here for those things. I'm not here to please my flesh. I'm here to serve my master. I'm here to serve Father Abraham, which is certainly a picture of serving God. I will not eat until I have an answer. Is it yes or is it no? He tells the whole story. They give yes. He says, great. Uh, assumably he, he begins eating meal and then he says let's go tomorrow or they begin asking hey can we take you know 10 days or so you know so that she can tell her friends goodbye you know we need to make preparations and he says no please because in, in this uh, culture you couldn't go until you were released by the guest of the house you had to stay so he's pleading please Please don't keep me here. Please let me go first thing in the morning because I wanna, I'm done with my task. I would like to take her back, so please release me. How easy could it have been for him to justify, oh man, I got the bride, I accomplished the will. Woo, good work. Thank you, Lord, all glory to God. Yeah, let's chill out a little bit. Let's relax. Let's have some good fun and let's, let's have a party for her, a sending away party. You could have justified every one of those things, but are they kingdom building? No, is it going to accomplish the goal? No, it's just, it's add-ons, it's fluff. His, he wanted to be immediately gone, first thing in the morning, back to his master because he had completed the task because the next thing in his mind, of course, is certainly knowing him, what's next, master? How can I serve you now? I've accomplished that, what's next? Give me the next task. He was not into relaxing, and I'm not saying sleep wasn't important. I'm sure he was recognizing needed rest. He had to do preparation. He had to make sure the animals were ready. But he was all about the master's business, 100% single-focused and dedicated. That is who we're supposed to be because we can justify so many things, and yet the examples that were given in Scripture, we don't justify. We serve our king, single-focused, and that is it. Do you not know that I am to be about my father's business? You know, Yeshua from age 12 I can't imagine that he did anything in his life that was outside of his father's business. Every activity he engaged in from age 12 was single-minded, single-focused, and diligent towards building the household of God. And I know we might be thinking in our natural minds, man, if I give up all this stuff, where's the fun going to be? You know, where's the joy going to be? Where's the relaxing going to be? Those are lies from Satan. I just curse them all right now. Do not let the enemy sow those things into your heads that, oh, I'm giving up everything. Even if you were... Are you not called to give up everything? When we all said yes, we said, I surrender all, everything. And if you didn't, then maybe you should rethink, is this really the path that you want to go? Because if you're truly a disciple of Yeshua, you said, I will give up everything. I won't go back and and bury the dead. I won't go back and uh, 
you know, make arrangements. I will follow you right now, right this minute with whatever I've got with me. I'm, or don't, I'm following you. That's, that's the example we have from even the disciples. They were called to leave immediately. Come, follow me. We don't go back. We don't do anything. We follow and we stay focused and that's it. And I believe, just from my experience, there's more joy, more fulfillment in carrying out what God has called us to do than any of the imitations we will ever find, any of the things that we've justified doing. When we get that garbage out of our lives, we will find more fulfillment than we've ever experienced, that we've ever had previous. And I know that it sounds strange, but you know, here's that goofy expression, God's kingdom is an upside down kingdom. Things that look like work and diligence and focus and all that, it's gonna be so rewarding, so fulfilling that we won't look back. Once you've tasted and seen that he is good, you'll never taste for the things of the world ever, ever, ever again. But engage, fully engage, fully commit to the ways and the things of God. Galatians 6, 7 through 9 says, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. If your activity, and, and believe me, I'm not, I'm not here pointing fingers. I don't even know what you may or may not be engaged in because I'm, I'm doing this myself. This is what I'm doing in my life right now. I'm assessing everything that I'm engaged in. But if it's being sown to the flesh, flesh I'm going to reap corruption. And I've seen that, and I've, you know, I've had all kinds of struggles. I think we all have all kinds of struggles. But the more I get out of the world, the less corruption I see in my flesh. And I'm just. I want us all to reap the things of the spirit and not c- corruption, not reap the things of the flesh. All it does is tear us down. We walk in guilt and shame and things that were never intended to walk in. Let us not lose heart in doing good for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. I love that. God's word is true. It's 100% true. Philippians 8, I'm sorry, 3, 14 through 15. <clears throat> I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. And if anything, you have a different attitude, God will reveal that to you also. And I included a translation in the message because it was just, I liked it. It says, I'm off and running and I'm not turning back, you know, like the runner running the race. So let's keep focus on that goal. We want to win the gold. Those of us who want everything God has for us, If any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. We simply need to come alongside what God is wanting to do in our lives. You know, he is sure to complete the good work he began in us, but how much longer do you want to endure hardships and pain and trials and struggles and trials? Uh, The quicker we allow the Spirit to unload this stuff which he wants to do, and I believe that strongly is what he's wanting to do today and will do if we simply submit and surrender today. Because if you don't do it today, you'll do it next year, two years, five years, and you'll have all the trauma and drama and garbage in between that he never intended us to have. But total commitment is what the Lord has asked and is asking. So ask the Spirit, what activities are you hindering in or what activities are you engaged in that are hindering, hindering you from that upward call, upward? What activities might reflect anything less than total commitment? You know, think about the things that you do. Is that, can you stand before God and say, I'm doing this, this is total commitment to you, Father. I'm doing this activity as unto you. This is totally for you. It's totally for building the kingdom because I love you. I'm engaged in this activity. If you can't stand before God and do that, why are you engaged in that activity? Because you will stand and you will hold account exactly in that way you will be held accountable as will i we all will for everything that we do and everything that we don't do god wants to clear our blurred vision today are we willing to respond i'm going to take i don't know i'm just going to pray i have two songs that are a total of about 10 minutes and this is time that it's just between you and the lord it's not for any other purpose uh, it's not to engage in the song. The song is really to uh, enable you to hear from the Spirit. And maybe everyone doesn't work that way. I do. Sometimes when I hear music, 
I can really, really connect with the Lord. So we're going to take some time, allow the Spirit to speak to you, and just write as the, as the Lord leads. Like I said, don't try to qualify it. If it's questionable, write it down. You can always scratch it off and say, yeah, this is totally for God. This is totally kingdom building, and he will show that to you. We don't need to be in fear. You know, Fear is not of God. Write it down and trust that God will speak to us. I had a vision of an eyeball and a person pulling the eyelid all the way back so that the eyeball to the back of it is completely exposed and our eyes are a gate and whatever we receive in our eye gates, uh, we need to evaluate. Also, what's behind there is our thinking. What are we thinking when we are watching whatever it is that we are watching and that we're to take every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. And it's really analyzing our thoughts and our motives and, and our, the gates that we are receiving things in um, and to have it come into the obedience of Christ. I don't know about you guys. I could probably go all day. with the things the Lord is sharing with me and uh, tremendous conviction in some things. You know, like I said earlier, it's easy to identify the things we would say that are sinful, yet wasting the time, you know, our precious, precious time on doing things that don't appear to be evil or bad. There's no justification for it still, so... As we go on through the next part of this, you know, continue to write. If the Lord puts something on your mind, write it down, you know. This, and it, the list may continue for days, weeks, and months, you know. Always we want to be evaluating what we're doing. But um, what I want to do now is read some different scriptures and begin to compare the things on your list with what you understand the Spirit speaking to you th through the scriptures that we're going to read. If you feel, yep, the Lord is saying, this is totally of me, I, I originated this, I want you engaged in this, keep right on doing that, then praise God, you can just scratch that off your list. But if you're feeling total conviction, you know, circle it, highlight it, put a star by it, whatever, and realize I, I got to get rid of that. And there are other things, you know, like the example I gave earlier, social media. Some of it might not necessarily be I need to get rid of it, but I got to reel it in. I'm, I'm abusing this thing that can be good, uh, but I'm, I'm abusing it for flesh or for my own purposes or whatever, you know. Or I've believed a lie of the enemy about this activity, that it's a good one, and, and it's not. First one is Ephesians <clears throat> five one it says therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. So just compare what's on your list, you know, mentally with what the Spirit reveals in your heart and ask yourself, does God engage in your activity? We're to be imitators of him. So if he isn't doing what you're doing, you know, or what I'm doing, why are we engaged in it? If he wouldn't do it, why are we? We shouldn't be. Next one is John 5.19. Therefore Yeshua answered and was saying to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, these things the Son also does in like manner. So Yeshua, who we're supposed to be an imitator of, he only did what he saw the Father doing. That's it. If he didn't see the Father do it, he wasn't engaged in it. Um, has the Father revealed to you that he engages in what he's doing? Remember our, the Lord's Prayer, on earth as it is in heaven. Is your activity being engaged on in heaven by anyone at any time? If it is, praise God. If it's not, again ask, why are you engaging in it? Colossians 1.10 says that 
so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Does your activity bear fruit? Is it a good work? Does it enable you to increase in the knowledge of God? Is it pleasing to him in every respect? If it isn't pleasing to him in every respect, get rid of it. You know, anyone that has pruned trees and bushes and shrubs, we at times prune healthy living branches. So sometimes the things that we prune aren't necessarily totally dead. Sometimes we prune things that aren't as fruitful as they could be. And the way to be most fruitful is sometimes prune some things that are, it's not horrible, but you know what, if I got rid of these, all the energy of those roots and the, the nutrients are gonna go to the few that's out there and they're gonna be highly fruitful and highly productive. So just ask the Lord. I'm not trying to get you to think one way or the other, um, but it needs to please him in all respects. If part of it is pleasing, ask him about it. Lord, is this something I should continue to do? I think, I think you like part of what I'm doing, but if it isn't all pleasing to him, this might be something that needs to be pruned because there is a different activity that can be fully pleasing to him. And it could be something you're already doing with that you could invest more time into that or a different activity. You know, the, the Spirit will lead us. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Is Yeshua leading your activity or did it originate in your flesh? And just ask, you know, you don't need to ask me and don't ask yourself, ask the Lord. Say, Lord, did this activity begin with you? Did it begin in heaven? Did it begin above the line? Did it begin with your initiation? Or is it something I drug out of Egypt? Is it an activity that I've always had, but it's not evil, so I'm keeping it or have kept it. But if it didn't originate above the line, if it didn't originate from God, why on earth are we engaging in it? And I have one last verse. Romans 12, 1 through 2. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. If it isn't good, acceptable, and perfect, we shouldn't be engaged in it. We are to be offering sacrifices. Our life is to be a sacrifice. That means we die to the flesh. In fact, we're already dead to the flesh, but are we walking that out? Our life should reflect one who has died to all things fleshly, every single thing. We are to be engaged in worship, spiritual service of worship, not conformed to this world. And that's just something else you can do. Does the world engage in my activity? And am I doing it for the same reason as the world? That should be a real quick, easy one. You know, the more we look like the world, the less we look like Yeshua. We're called to be a called out, set apart, sanctified, holy, distinct people that does not look like the world. Yeshua didn't look like the world in any way, shape, or form. I don't believe there are any activities he engaged in that look like the world, with the exception of he ate, he slept, you know, he, he took care of himself. But that's obviously a, a need spiritually and the kingdom purpose. We need to take care of ourselves. So take your lists <clears throat> and just keep them with you. They're private. Don't let your significant other see them or your kids or anyone else. They're just for you. And continue to seek the Lord. You know, Conviction doesn't come all at once. It's something that happens over time and you may be released to engage in some of those things and you may be convicted that, no, this isn't from God. And we must also remember that any time we remove an activity, you can't just leave a void or a hole because you'll fill it with something and it'll probably be something worse than what you were doing or 
is less valuable. Ask the Lord, what am I to do with this time that I've freed up in my life? How am I to engage you? How am I to seek first the kingdom of God? Because that's all we have to do, seek first the kingdom. Everything else will fall in place once we do that. But ask him, Lord, I freed up some time in my life because I'm getting rid of these things. How now can I use this to bring you glory? How can I use this to draw near to you? How can I do this to show you I love you? Because the sacrifice isn't you know, for anything other than an action of love towards him. So ask him how I can show you love with this time that you've given to me.